the economic aspect of this whole white paper and the deliberations is, I think, an important consideration for all Singaporeans. So I think some would say that the forecast of 3 to 5 percent or a more likely 3 to 4 percent is uh, less than scintillating. Um, I would say that it's neither is it sedentary. It is a challenging but a realistic forecast of what we can achieve based on our aspirations and our domestic constraints. We need to find the balance that is sustainable and achievable from our point of view. Where will the jobs be created and how will the economy transform? I think to some extent this is a very dynamic uh, element because of external forces and our own relative competitiveness. What I will say is first, we are driven by the fact that we are in Asia and Asia is a rising economic region. And that presents a whole set of opportunities because of the fact that you've got rapid urbanization, you've got a rising middle class, and you've got demands that stem from that which play to our strengths because of our capabilities in, for example, urban solutions, our capabilities in providing high-end services for a better-off middle class. So these are opportunities that we can seize. At the same time, I think our existing businesses will also be transforming. In other words, our economy as it is today will also see some transformation. It doesn't mean a wholesale offshoring of activities. What it means rather is that there will be a careful rethink, I think, on the part of all businesses, what makes economic sense to be located here. Because there are parts of the value chain where it makes eminent sense to still continue to do this in Singapore. And we will compete and secure those businesses. But there are other parts of the businesses which might then require a rethink on the part of businesses. And this is really the transformation we need to go through. I think what we want to achieve is a competitive economy that creates a wide spectrum of opportunities. So although there is some emphasis on the PMET component, the PMET component cannot thrive unless you have the non-PMET support. And so our strategy is also, and integral to it, is also the need to make sure that those who have got other skill sets that we need to support this higher value activities, we continue to grow that sector or that group. So that's where the pre-employment training and the continuing education are going to be important in terms of endowing them with the relevant skills, firstly, Secondly, I think in terms of productivity, and I think that's interrelated to the whole issue of uh, skills, this will again enable us to then offer them better jobs with better pay and therefore afford them a better quality of living.